we're not. Videoing. Videoing. We're videoing. Video. All right, guys. And here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got another unboxing here. Uh, we've been doing a lot of reptile stuff lately, but now we're starting to get back into the season for fish. Uh, so this one is a not too big of a fish order, but we've got some African cichlids, some oddball stuff, a few predator fish, and then we got a ton of plants again. We did another trans shipment. We got a big box there, and another smaller box with a bunch of the smaller pots. Uh, so we'll kind of go through the fish first here show you what we got. Uh, probably won't go through all the plants, but we'll try to show you some of the cooler stuff that came on, like the big mother fox and that. So first things first, cardinal tetras, a couple floaters in there. Uh, we've been out of cardinal tetras for a little while. I usually don't get them from this supplier, uh, but usually when we're out for more than like two weeks, people start coming with pitchforks <laughs> out at our door. So I figured I'd get some to hold this off at least. Uh, my other supplier is on vacation currently. So, I guess I've got a couple predatory fish on this order. This is Cicla calabari, so it's the calabari peacock bass. They're a Brazilian peacock bass. They're actually considered one of the smaller ones, where some of the others can get 24, 30 inches. These guys stay usually around 18 inches. Uh, and there is a bunch of variants of them. There's some pretty like high gold ones that cost quite a bit more, but this is just the regular variety. Got some good sized gold rams in. There's no good way of looking at this bag. That's kind of weird. So these guys get some kind of pinks in their body uh, and those deep oranges and kind of the gold coloration. Uh, basically just a variant of the typical ram, just a color form. And these guys are pretty popular and we had a lot earlier in the year and then they kind of slowed down being available, so it's nice to get them in again. This is Alonicara Big Fibri. Uh, they're from a location called oh. Boss Man's here. Boss Man's here. And he's out. Yeah. Now you're in it forever. So same uh, species as Eureka, the Eureka Reds, but these are from Undue Reef, so they're called Lemon Jakes. Uh, they do get a lot more yellow coloration once they've settled in. Uh, the Undue Reef region of Malawi is like a really shallow, rocky area, which is typically where they come from. And these are just the regular blue rams. Um, so you guys would obviously have heard about the German blue rams, which is just really a line bred variant of these guys. These guys are still really nice, and you can see some of the males in there with their coloration starting to come through, and they'll look really good once they've settled in, I'm sure. Box one. <laughs> uh, so more cardinal tetras in here. I'll have to show those twice. If you can see this. It's one of the little placats. We got some females and I think one male. Fish. You guys have double, triple bag and stuff, so it's kind of hard to see. Maybe this will work better. This guy's like almost solid white. It's kind of cool. Um, Madagascar rainbows, uh, really popular rainbow, kind of different from the Indonesian and Australian species you typically see. I did order 30 of these, but there's only like 12 available, so we just got what was left. The males get kind of this nice red coloration around their fins, um, where the females don't. Uh, and they're a good size, usually about four inches as adults. Another one of the placats. What are you? 
These guys are really cool. They are not gonna look like anything right now. These are tricolor Cyprochromus. Uh, so these are Cyprochromus leptosoma, and then tricolor, they get about four or five inches. They're a Tanganyikan fish. Um, so different from all the Malawi, like the peacocks and things like that. Uh, tricolor, obviously, because they get kind of this yellow, blue, and purple-ish coloration to them. Uh, four or five inches, and they do a lot better eating stuff like frozen food, mainly. We only got a few of those. Tanganyikans are a little trickier uh, than other, you know, the peacocks and stuff, so they're quite, not quite as popular. There's a few people that keep them around here. Um, but they do have really interesting breeding behavior compared to a lot of the Malawi stuff. These are pretty cool fish, so we've gotten black ghost knives in before. Uh, these are Osa knife fish. We've never actually had these in the past. Can we go kill who's ringing that bell? Yeah, I said I'm about to murder someone. I bet that guy. <laughs> um, so yeah, Osa knife fish, uh, bigger than the black ghost knives. Uh, these guys can push around 30 inches, so you definitely need something like a 180 to keep them in. They're very, very slender though, uh, even though that seems quite large, they're kind of snake-like in the, in the water. Um, small mouth, not, so not quite like a clown knife. Uh, more similar mouth to the black ghost knife, so they're smaller. They do good on frozen food. They're semi-aggressive, so as long as it's, they're good with most things that they basically can't just fit into their mouth. And I believe this is the first time, the first time I've ever ordered them. I don't believe the stores had them in the past, so really cool for people that like oddball fish. It's off the box. The one that doesn't want to kill everything else. Alright. Continuing on here. These are Critocara mori. Uh, they used to be considered a half, so they used to be Hapochromus mori. Now they're kind of their own thing, uh, commonly referred to as a blue dolphin. They get around 10 inches max size. They get like a big, nice blue coloration, this kind of hump on their head, especially for the males. Uh, relatively peaceful considering their size. We have the odd male that's a little more aggressive, but uh, they definitely do better not being housed with things like Maboon and stuff. And they are slower growing, so it takes them quite a while to get to that size. These are Werneri rainbows or Threadfin rainbows. So you see these males get those really long trailers on them and they kind of, you'll see them flash off to each other like kind of competing um these are actually adult size this is the probably the biggest i've ever received and they don't get much bigger than a couple inches uh and these guys are from the maruk region of indonesia uh these would be captive bred though pretty cool rainbow we haven't had them in a while uh that's big what are you The Lana Karakani guy from the Benji Islands. Uh, fair size one. This one looks like it's going to be really nice when it settles in. It has a really, really deep blue coloration in its face. And then you see some of the yellow peeking through in its body uh, and its fins there. I tried to get a few adult males, but they short shipped us on a few. I guess they sold out as we ordered. Uh, but we did get a couple peacocks, and then we got this guy here. Oh, flying wacky things. So this. Again, these also used to be a hap. These used to be Hapochromus uh, ally. Now they're Cyanochromus ally or Friar. They keep changing the names. Uh, but these are like an open water predator in Malawi. Uh, they go good with a lot of peacocks and stuff. They get about seven. You can push eight inches. Uh, again, really, really nice blue. They typically get that white striped dorsal um, and then the yellow kind of anal fin there and pectorals. Uh, and lastly here, another fish we've never had before. Uh, so many of the predator guys would have heard of wolf fish in the past. Uh, specifically, you'll see like the rainbow wolf fish and the malabarakis, like the black wolves, which are the more common and cheaper variety. Uh, we got a true wolf in. This is got a couple people eyeing these guys up for a while. We decided to bring one in. Um, 
pretty rare, not something you see too often. They are pricier because they have to export them at a large size. And you can see this kind of black garbage bag looking thing surrounding it. That's kind of to protect, well, the whole shipment kind of from the fish wanting to eat everything that's near it. Uh, so it keeps it kind of a little more calm. Sometimes they ship them with a set of this too, but and they'll do it with piranhas. It's pretty common with. Oh, this guy eats me through the bag. So this is Hopless Amaria. It's a true wolf fish. Let's see if we can get. We'll get a shot of this guy in the tank. If you can't see him here, I promise. Um, these guys have <laughs> very aggressive fish. Very nasty bite. He does have a little bit of damage on his tail, but I'm sure he'll heal up. Uh, you can. Yeah, you can see his teeth there. Um, those only get bigger. These guys push three feet. Uh, sometimes can get larger, but you don't typically see them past that in the hobby. Um, pretty independent fish. They eat everything. The one instance where I have seen kept another fish was a European keeper. He kept a 30 inch one I, in like a 260, and I think he's had like 500 or 1,000 cardinals in it. And it was just at that point that it doesn't really view it as food, so it was kind of a cool mix. Um, but yeah, something we definitely haven't had very, or we've never had this specific kind in the past, and it's not something we're going to get too often, so definitely a fish worth coming to check out. For the whole day, it's here. Yeah. Um, so we'll pause it there, and then we'll transition to the plants. Help. Yes. Help. Please stop the video.